If you're anything like me, back in the days when Windows XP and 7 let you deeply customize the OS, I used to love making my computers look completely different to the stock OS they ran, with different themes, icon packs and cursors. Windows XP looking like Windows Vista? Windows 7 that look like Mac OS? Absolutely, I've done that. So with that in mind, we have three very special operating system modifications to look at in today's video. First up is Project 2K. This is a heavily modified version of Windows 10, made to resemble Windows 2000. Right from the start, the system WinLogon has been taken over by the NT login page, right down to the iconic startup sound. We even have the getting started with page, and we can even set up our dial-up connection from here. Of course, the classic start menus here, including the Windows 2000 help program. I am particularly impressed with the fact that all the animations work. Like when you right click on the desktop, the menu pops out from your cursor location, and in the start menu, the list pulls from the left hand side. The way this modification works is pretty genius. Anything that could have been pulled from 2000 has been, including the Media Player, Outlook Express 6, Sound Recorder, Minesweeper, Paint, CD Player and so on. Any programs and features that couldn't be taken from 2000 have had replicated apps, or have been taken from later versions of Windows. For an example of the latter, Winver, Windows Update Settings and Address Book are taken from Windows XP. And in terms of the former, the Magnifier is a third party program, though it feels right at home. The Volume Panel is taken from React OS, yeah seriously. The search within Explorer is done via File Search Classic. The taskbar is modified with 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker. The start menu is handled by a heavily skinned open shell. Win16 application emulation is handled by OTVDM. The clock in a tray is handled by T-Clock, and the list goes on. It's extremely impressive as to the lengths that the creator has gone through, to make sure that every part of the OS at least looks classic, even if it has to rely on non-Windows 2000 components. Maybe one of the best ways they've done this is with Internet Explorer which is a skinned version of Firefox to look exactly like IE5, but still giving you the ability to use modern websites, or watch videos from your favourite YouTuber, with no compromise. Any system elements the creator needed to tap into, they use auto hotkey for. There is even a modified Desk 2K, which is the properties panel from Windows 2000 and XP, and it works! You can change the colour scheme of the Windows Classic theme to all the same ones as on 2000. A lot of heavy modifications were done to the Explorer too. The Windows folder is renamed to Windows NT, and the Users folder is renamed to Documents and Settings. Though this is nothing more than a visual change within Explorer, as the folders are still named the same as on Windows 10 internally, to avoid the OS from freaking out. The Control Panel is just a secret folder with shortcuts, as a neat circumvention of you having to use the Windows 7 Control Panel. And let's not forget, this is modern Windows, so most apps should work, with some exceptions, like any apps that rely on elements from Windows that have been stripped off. Best example I can think of is the Apple Music app. We don't have the Microsoft Store here, and some pretty important elements of 10 have been removed, like the Photos app, or even a decent music player, so you will have to get Airfan View and Winamp, which to be fair, is a more authentic experience anyway. And a lot of apps still scale perfectly to the classic theme. Next up is a reskin of Ubuntu, to look like Windows 11. This is Wubuntu, or as it shamelessly calls itself, Windows Ubuntu, because using two trademark names is better than using none, I guess. Just like Project 2K, you have to give the off credit, at least initially, to the work he pulled off to transform KDE Plasma into looking like Windows. The taskbar looks nearly identical, and likewise to the start menu, which in a way is actually better than Windows 11, as there are no ads or preloaded bloatware like Candy Crush or Instagram. We even have Microsoft Copilot, for better or for worse, however it is just a web link to the website, from the built-in Microsoft Edge, as there is a native Linux client for said browser. Likewise, chat is a shortcut to the Linux version of Teams, the search panel actually looks quite a lot like the PowerToys module in actual Windows, so if I play to the accuracy on that one. Otherwise, any of the apps that you see, like the Notepad, are just KD or Debian software, with a different icon, and otherwise behave differently to that of Windows. We get two choices of productivity apps, we get OnlyOffice, a nicely cloned version of the MS Office suite, as well as the online links to Office 365. We also have OneDrive, though as it is third party software, I would say clear from logging into it. There is also Android app compatibility, but for whatever reason, that and OneDrive are locked behind a product key. Yes, this OS is technically not free. Within the PowerToys, no not the Windows one, settings module, which is an impressive copy of the Windows settings page, we can activate the OS. Though the system never specifically says why we need to do so. Like what are the advantages? Furthermore, most of the settings that you can select just bring you to the respective Linux ones, or third party apps. We do have EXE file support, though it is just a basic install of Wine which from my, albeit small, experience with Linux is basically a big no-no. It's like trying to install a program onto a bare-bones install of Windows XP. Things won't work because you're missing net frameworks, 
DirectX DLLs, Direct Sound DLLs, etc. If you're running a proper distro of Linux, it's best to run Wine in containers based on the program. Or better yet, use a launcher that can download the appropriate extras for you. I did think initially that this could have been the perfect OS for your elderly family, but you'd be far better off installing Arch, or a KDE-based distro, and doing these modifications yourself, as the creator of Ubuntu has gotten into some hot water in how data is collected when purchasing and activating the product keys. Check out Michael MJD's video on more information on that subject. But what if you want to make your Linux install look like Mac OS? Here is ParaOS, a long-standing Linux distro. So long-standing, in fact, I was shocked during research for this video to see that it's still being fully maintained. Though after 2021, the OS has started to take on its own unique identity. Instead of being as closely resembling to Mac OS as it once was, it has new buttons and icons, resembling more of a Chinese skin on the Android phone than Mac OS. But hey oh, As amazing as the installer is, looking very similar to the Mac OS one, it doesn't actually work. It wiped my virtual hard drive though, good thing I tried this in VMware. Instead, I used the 2021 version, one tray. And yeah, this is how I remember ParaOS, with its icons and wallpaper ripped straight from the then current version of Mac OS. Honestly, the way that this distro was skinned is impressive. It's based on KDE Plasma, once again, and it is very faithful to its inspiration. Sure, the icons in the status bar aren't very well aligned, but look at that dock! It looks just like Mac OS, it even zooms like it. And there are some nice original touches too, like the animation when moving windows. I remember how these fluid animations were a big selling point on Linux 15 years ago, likely even longer, when Windows didn't have a compositioning engine. Just like with the inspired icons, the popular Linux packages have been renamed in a ParaOS theme, like Rhythmbox being renamed to PTunes, and Empathy being renamed to PMessage. Remember when you could use Empathy and Pigeon to communicate via websites like Facebook and Google Chat before everything went proprietary? Good times. Anyway, it's impressive how close these Linux apps are to looking like their modern macOS equivalents, especially Epiphany which is still vaguely macOS inspired in its GNOME web modern counterpart. Sadly, I struggled to capture much footage due to the constant crashes of the window manager, you know, the thing that does the cool window animations, but I did try to update the underlying KDE Neon distro to at the very least see if I can update the apps, since sudo app get upgrade did not do anything. And uh, yeah, that didn't go too hot either. Oopsies. I hope you found the subject interesting, and if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.